I'm Graham Fitch and I'm bringing you this video demonstration on repeated notes for Pianist Magazine from Steinway Hall in London on a, an extremely resonant Model D um, in a beautiful cavernous space here. So um, I'm going to be talking about how to manage repeated notes and I'm going to start off with a little exercise that I was shown that I've adapted um, from Peter Feuchtwanger who I had lessons with at one point. Um, particularly studying the exercises that he formulated. This one is a modification of what, what he showed me. Um, let me just demonstrate it first. The point of this exercise, as I use it, is so that when I do my repeated note, I let the finger that's just played pass along to the next key. Do you see? A lot of the problem with, with tension in repeated notes is when people curl their fingers up like this. I mean, just try that. If you do that away from a piano, you just notice already there's tension in your hand and it goes up the arm, and that's no good for piano playing. We just can't control the piano. So this exercise, just go up chromatically, insisting on the finger that's just played, not curling up, but passing along to the right and of course do it in the left hand the other way. Now if you struggle with it I've, I, I can suggest this as a kind of um, preliminary if you'd like. I allow my fifth finger to play which keeps it on the keyboard so that when I do this my hand is actually moving the same way. Now with repeated single notes the choice of whether we do a repeated, uh, use the same finger or whether I use a different finger is determined really by the, the context, the speed and, and the context. Um, so if I, I'm going to take this little example here from the last movement of Mozart B flat K570 sonata and let's look at the left hand and I hear a kind of bassoon effect going on down there and I'm quite comfortable playing that repeated B-flat with my thumb. Gives me a good sound. However, at the end of there, with the semiquavers or the sixteenth notes, let me just show you that passage to the very last bar. I'm going to show it to you slow motion. There's my first repeated note. Five, four. I want a new finger on that repeated note. And I want a new finger on that repeated note too. Why? Well, if I, if I tried to use the same finger, I can do it, but I find it causes me tension because I have to lock my hand Whereas, that mobility, the fact of keeping mobile keeps me free, keeps, keeps the, the, the repeated note manageable. And you'll notice the way I'm choreographing this. You could do it in one of two or three different ways. I feel this is a wrist circle down, round, and then up. I could do it with rotations if I want. So in those fast repeated notes, I would definitely change the finger. Ah, let's have a little look at the Scarlatti, famous uh, Scarlatti Toccata for the, in D minor. Um, let's just let's look, consider the fingering for this. Let me just play you a little bit. Before I play it to you, I'm, just, I'm going to avoid just starting straight in with the technical difficulty and just look at some of the, the musical interest here. The left hand for a start, just have a look at this. Listen to some of those chords. And the right hand isn't just about the rattle of the repeated notes, but it's also about the shape of the line. You see, you've got to look at the musical communication, not just the difficulty, the technical difficulty itself. So let's look at the difficulty itself, which is how to play six repeated notes. In a 
row and not get tight. Quite a challenge. Well, there's two things that I'm doing there. I suppose you could say three things. One, um, I'm aware that I don't have to bring the key all the way up to the top on a grand piano. I use the escapement, which is that point in the key. Do you see there what I've got? If I put my finger in the key so you can see what I'm doing. I've only got, I'm only lifting the key, I don't know, two thirds of the way up. And I can repeat it freely. So what I'm aiming for with a lot of repeated notes, and that goes for the Mozart example before, I'm aiming to catch the key before it's come all the way up to the top. It'll give you a much better sound and it'll feel so much better. Now here, how, how to do that? Well, two things. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm changing fingers inside the key. In other words, I'm tying three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one to itself. Now, you may think, oh, he's key bedding. He's committed the sin of key bedding. I'm not key bedding. I'm not pushing against the key. I'm simply substituting one finger for another. So that when I do, See, I feel now that I'm inside my key. I'm not coming up to the top. That's one thing. The other thing I'm doing is allowing a free rotation of my forearm. Uh, let me just show you how I would suggest you build this. So take a three and a one on a, on a, a, a D and an F. You see what I'm doing? You, if you can do this, with this rotary action. I could go on till Christmas doing that and it wouldn't cause me tension. Two one, by the way, that fingering, I forgot it. Two one, then you can, then you can rattle away with three, two, one, three, two, one. I'm gonna end with an example from Beethoven, the Waldstein Sonata Opus 53 which begins with, famously, with, with, a, with a bunch of repeated chords. Now, I, you'll notice what's going on there. I don't know if you can see clearly, but what I'm aiming for again is to find the spot in the key that is probably about halfway down. just stay at that point and vibrate. I feel like I'm vibrating um, through my wrist here. But my wrist is actually quite firm. I don't want a floppy wrist, neither do I want a stiff wrist. It feels a little bit like, what does it feel like? Well, I suppose if you've ever uh, stood on or walked on one of those sprung floors that you find in gymnasiums or dance studios, you've got that kind of movement under your foot. It feels quite nice, doesn't it? It's a sort of a bouncy feeling. So that's what I've got that I'm sensing. See, and I could go on forever without getting tired or tight. If I should sense that I'm getting a little fatigued, I've got the option of adjusting in my forearm. Just a little bit raise, fall, a little bit like that, which will again help, help to keep me free and loose. My fingers are firm, my wrists are, I hesitate to use the word firm, but they're not floppy. Um, and then I can work from the sounding point of the key and create a very effortless series of repeated chords. So I hope that's given you a few helpful suggestions and I will see you soon.